If you're a musician and you've ever wanted to record yourself, you've probably felt a little overwhelmed about how much of an investment you're gonna need to make in gear and actually how to use it. The great thing is it doesn't need to be overly complicated or expensive to get up and running with your own beginner home studio and I'm gonna show you all of the essentials that you need for under $500. I've recorded all of my music from home for over a decade, and I've had five of my albums chart on the Billboard charts, so I'm really excited to walk you through how to get started with all of this, so let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna need is a computer, and this is basically the center of your home studio that everything else is going to work off of in some way. I personally use a Mac, but PC works just as well, and if you already own a computer, it's probably powerful enough to get started with. I have a really powerful computer now because I do a lot of heavy audio and video production work, but the first computer I used to get started with home recording back in 2011 was a 13 inch MacBook Pro with very basic stats at the time. I think it had maybe four gigs of RAM, which by today's standards isn't much. So I think you'll probably be fine to get started on whatever computer you currently have. Okay, so now we need a way to plug a microphone into your computer to actually record something. And that's where our second piece of gear comes in, which is called an audio interface. You can plug your microphone into your audio interface with an XLR cable, or you can plug an instrument like an electric violin or guitar into it as well using a quarter inch cable. And then from there, you plug your audio interface into your computer, usually via USB or Thunderbolt cable, which then converts your audio recording into a digital format that your computer can now work with. Audio interfaces also have what are called preamps built in to help boost the volume of your microphone to an appropriate level for recording. And you can also plug your headphones in to listen to your audio. Now there are a lot of audio interfaces out there to choose from nowadays and the technology is just so good that you really don't need to spend a lot of money here to get something really nice that could last you a long time. Before I recommend one to you though, I just wanted to run through a couple of other important things that you want to consider before making your choice. The main thing to ask yourself is how many inputs and outputs do you need? If you're only planning on recording yourself in mono, meaning just one microphone, then you only need Need one input. As a violinist, that's how I personally like to record. But if you need more than one input because you plan on recording in stereo or you maybe want to record more than one person at the same time, then you'll just need to make sure that the interface you get has enough inputs for what you're looking to do. As for outputs, it's usually standard that an interface comes with a headphone jack, which is really all you need. But a lot of interfaces are also going to offer other types of outputs to connect studio monitors. Studio monitors aren't an essential at this point though, but they are are great to have for audio production, so if you feel like you might want to add studio monitors someday, then you might want to increase your budget a little bit for an interface to get those outputs so that you have that option down the road, but otherwise you can stick with something that just offers the essentials while still maintaining a high level of quality. And that's where I would recommend this audio interface, the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. As long as you're okay with one input and you don't need to connect studio monitors, this is, I think, the best one you can get for the money. I think it's a great buy at around $100, and it's very similar to the first audio interface I ever used, which is the now discontinued M-Audio Firewire Solo interface. Just make sure whatever you choose, it's compatible with your computer and has whatever inputs and outputs you need. And you should have a lot of great options, especially in the $100 to $300 price range. Okay, so our next essential goes hand in hand with our audio interface because we need it to actually record our sound with, whether that's your instrument, vocals, or any other sound source. And that is a microphone. <laughs> so this can really be an overwhelming category because there are just tons of microphones out there and they all have various pros and cons depending on what you're looking to use them for, all at very different prices ranging from under $100 all the way up to multiple thousands of dollars. So I'm gonna walk you through the main things to consider here, but just know that while your microphone is a really important piece of your equipment, you definitely don't need to spend a ton of money to get something that's gonna sound nice. The three main types of microphones that we're gonna walk through are condenser microphones, dynamic microphones, and ribbon microphones. So let's start with condenser mics, since for most beginners looking to record vocals or most instruments, this is the type of microphone that I would recommend to you, and specifically a large diaphragm condenser mic. These types of microphones are generally gonna sound nice on most vocals and instruments, and they pick up a lot of detail, and they usually have what's called a cardioid polar pattern, which means that they pick up sound mostly in the direction that they're pointed at, while canceling out the rest of the room noise. So that's really ideal for most of us who are recording from home, who don't have a perfect 
acoustically treated room. Condenser microphones need to be powered by what's called phantom power, which is usually included on most audio interfaces, but just something that I wanted to point out. So make sure that you have that ability on your audio interface if you get this type of microphone. Condenser mics can be large or small diaphragm, and small diaphragm can be great too, but again, I just recommend a large diaphragm to most people as a great all around choice. And the one that I've had personal experience with is this Rode NT1 here, which you can get for around 200 to $300, depending on which version you choose. So I'll just quickly explain the other types of mics here too, in case you find one of those might be a better fit. Dynamic microphones are popular for live performance and for instruments like drums or electric guitar or bass where you're recording the actual amp with a microphone. They're less sensitive in terms of frequencies and sound pressure, so they're great for louder instruments and for vocals that are louder, but in my opinion, not as good for something like capturing all the little details that come from an instrument like the violin. They also usually have a cardioid polar pattern, which like I said before, is definitely ideal for most home studios. The Shure SM57 and the SM57 SM58 are really nice options that only cost around $100. And then ribbon mics used to be super popular back in the day, like between the 1930s and 1960s, but they just aren't as popular today. They have what's called a figure eight or bi-directional polar pattern, meaning they pick up the sound the same when approached from the front as well as from the back, which could be a good or a bad thing depending on your situation. They're incredibly detailed without being overly sensitive and they record sound in a very natural way that's closer to how your ears actually hear than any other type of microphone. I personally use a ribbon microphone and I love it for how it sounds on my violin because it captures it so closely to how I actually hear it and I feel like it doesn't lose any of its warmth, which is really important to me. Some people describe the sound of ribbon mics as dark, whereas a condenser mic is usually described as brighter sounding. Obviously it depends on the mic and the sound source. And at the end of the day, it's really just a matter of your personal taste and what kind of sound you want for whatever you're recording. My microphone here though is really pricey and it's definitely not the microphone that I started learning how to record with. So I can't recommend that here for a beginner studio. I actually started with a really terrible USB mic, which is also something that I would not recommend here. But if you want to give a ribbon mic a try, I have heard good things about the SE Electronics X1R ribbon mic at around $230. $30. So you can see that each of these types of microphones has different pros and cons and might be better suited for certain instruments or voices over others. So while I do recommend the large diaphragm condenser as a great all around option, you should just absolutely choose whatever type you feel will suit your specific needs. I've tried a lot of mics over the years from Rode, Sennheiser, Shure, AKG, and I currently use an AEA, and all of those are great brands that offer mics at a lot of different budget levels. All of these microphones will connect to your audio interface via an XLR cable, and some of them come with a cable while others will require you to purchase a cable. And you're also gonna wanna get a mic stand, and for that you'll wanna get something sturdy, so just make sure that you consider the weight of your microphone there as well. All right, now on to our next essential, which is a digital audio workstation, also just referred to as a DAW. Now this is the software program that's basically your whole audio recording and production command center where you can record, edit, arrange, mix, and master everything in. I personally also love composing and producing music, so beyond just recording my violin here, this is also where I create all of my music from start to finish. So I'll write out all of my parts using my MIDI keyboard and assign all sorts of different synths and sample instruments to my tracks. So this is an incredibly powerful and fun tool to work with that can do a lot more than just record music. I use a DAW called Logic Pro X that only works on Macs, but most DAWs are cross compatible and work on Mac or PC. There are a ton of different ones to choose from besides Logic Pro like Ableton Live, Cubase, FL Studio, and plenty of others, and all of them are capable of recording and producing professional music. Now a lot of these DAWs offer different versions ranging from a free version with fewer features all the way up to full professional versions costing hundreds of dollars with more features than you'd probably actually need for starting out. So my recommendation here would be to try whatever free one you have available to you first and then just upgrade later once you feel limited by its capabilities. If you have a 
Mac, GarageBand is a free light version of Logic Pro and it's great to start with. Also, a lot of audio interfaces actually come with a free trial version of a DAW, so that can be a great way to try something out. The Focusrite Scarlett Solo interface that I previously recommended comes with Ableton Light, so I'd recommend trying that out if you get that interface. All right, we only need one more thing now for our essential home studio, and that is a pair of headphones. You're gonna use your headphones to hear yourself when you're recording, and you can also use headphones for mixing and mastering. Studio monitors, which are the speakers that you see in studios, can be great, but they're not essential, and honestly, for beginners, I just wouldn't recommend them anyway. It's not something that I started out with either, and I would advise you to wait and save up to buy a nice pair when you feel like you've gotten to the point where you could really benefit from them. But when you're just starting out, headphones just make things a lot easier. You don't need to worry about an acoustically treated room with headphones, and you don't have to worry about disturbing anyone wherever you live. Now that I have kids, I actually end up using my headphones way more often than my monitors, which isn't always ideal, but sometimes it's just not worth it to ruin a good nap. <laughs> there are a bunch of different types of headphones, and one of the main things to consider is whether you want a pair of open back or closed back. There are pros and cons to each type, like I like to use my closed back headphones, this pair of Sony MDR 7506 headphones for recording, and my open back pair, the Sennheiser HD 650s for mixing. If you're just looking to use these for recording, then I think the Sonys are great, but I know that a lot of you will probably like to get into audio production down the road as well. So if that is the case, then I'd recommend spending a little bit more to get a pair of headphones that could perform well for recording and mixing. There are so many great options in the $100 to $200 price range, and I know Bayer Dynamic, AKG, and Audio-Technica make some really great headphones in that range. So I'd take a look at those options and choose what you feel best suits your needs. All right, so at this point, we've covered all of the basics that you need to record yourself for under $500 if you followed my gear recommendations. If you have a little bit more budget and you're interested in getting into the audio production side of things and you wanna create tracks with sample instruments and whatnot, then one piece of bonus gear that I wouldn't be able to live without in my setup is a MIDI keyboard. I do a ton of production work with sample instruments, and while you can actually draw in notes with a pencil tool inside of your DAW, I personally feel like that would be a really rough way to work. So while a MIDI keyboard isn't really an essential for everyone, I personally think that it's a great thing to have. I currently use and love the Complete Control S88. I love having the full range and the hammer action keys feel really close to a real piano. So this is my favorite keyboard that I've ever used, but it's also really large and at the higher end for price. Native Instruments makes a whole line of keyboards in different price ranges, and I really love their products. So I'd recommend checking those out if it's in your budget. But if you're just looking for something quality at a lower price point, the Akai Professional LPK25 is something that I've used in the past and it only costs $60. I actually have the older model here that I bought back in 2010 and it still works and I've actually produced entire songs with this. As tiny as it is, it's a fully capable MIDI keyboard and you can work around the range limitation by just pitching your notes up or down the octave, either from the keyboard itself or inside your DAW. Sample instruments and software synths are another thing that I couldn't live without, but that's a huge discussion for another video that I will happily make because I absolutely love sample instruments. <laughs> Since I started recording music back in 2011, I've recorded all 12 of my albums, more than 50 singles and plenty of cues for video games and other commercial projects by myself from home. I've definitely upgraded my setup over the years as this has become my profession, but my first studio setup consisted of just the essentials like I've been recommending here. Just know that you don't have to break the bank to get started with all of this, and you can still make really nice sounding music with lower cost gear. And also you can make really bad sounding music with really expensive gear because so much of this is just gonna come down to building your own skills through actually recording and producing music yourself, and of course your songwriting skills. Now maybe you watched this video because you already have something in mind that you'd like to record, but if you're just starting out and are looking for tips on how to actually write a song, I made a really in-depth video that covers the entire songwriting process from start to finish over here if you wanna check that out next. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again soon in the next video.